Bibles for a few moments to the book of Revelation chapter 1. One of my favorite verses, verse 18. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Hmm. Strange things happen in church, don't they? Well, some not so strange. I'm glad you're here tonight and uh, hope that you have a good week this coming week. Just trust in the Lord and whatever comes your way will turn out all right. I believe that with all of my heart and uh, trust that you'll do that. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. That can be nobody but the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard a song a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm sorry I don't remember who sang it. And who sang it's not important. But the message in the song is uh, what I want to speak to you about tonight. I got this entire message from that song. Just three simple points, but they, I pray, will speak to your heart as they spoke to mine. I want to preach to you tonight on the subject, it's too late. Now there's a lot of things that we could say that about. It's too late for us to turn back the clock and undo some things that we did years ago. It's too late to turn back the clock and regain years that have already gone, their history. We cannot relive them. We cannot redo some things that we'd love to redo if it were at all possible. It's just too late for those things. They are forever past and forever gone. I was thinking the other day when I was about 19 and 20 years old. My mind says I still can but my body argues with my mind and the body usually wins out. I just cannot do what I used to do when I was young. It's too late for me to do a lot of those things. I used to run the hills, slide down the hills, climb every tree that there was in the mountains just about, climbed over the rocks, Now I have trouble getting off the couch and making it to the kitchen to get a plate of food. Those days are gone. It's just too late for me to be able to do some of the things that I used to do. There are some things that I think that I I pray will speak to your heart. Uh, Number one, it's too late to tell me that God is not real. You're going to understand where this song, what the, this song is when I uh, get through the message. It's too late to tell me that God's not real. The Lord has proved himself to me time and time again. A ghost could not do that. Somebody that's not real could not do that. He's a friend, the Bible says, that sticketh closer than a brother. And I I just don't know that by the Bible telling me that. I know that in reality because he has stuck by me closer than a brother. He has been there when nobody else was there. He has done what nobody else could have done. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is real and it's too late to tell me that he's not. One of the popular songs or songwriters or singers, whatever she is, that uh, years ago kids used to Im- imitate her. Parents would buy clothes for the kids of this particular singer, Sally, Sally, My- Miley Cyrus, is that? Well, I don't go for those things, but anyway, she made a statement the other week 
that anybody that believes the Bible is the biggest fool that ever lived in this old world. She makes fun of Christians that believe the Bible. She calls it a fable. But listen, I got, the, I got acquainted with the author of the Bible and I'm here to tell you it's real and what he says is the truth. It's too late to tell me that God's not real. Those folks are going to find out one day he's real because I don't care how popular or how mockery they become, one day they'll stand before the King of kings and Lord of lords and he'll be their judge rather than their savior. But I'm glad right now he's the savior of anybody that will come to him and call upon his name. I met him years ago at an old-fashioned altar and I'm here to tell you he's as real to me today as he was then, if not more real. It's too late to tell me that God's not real. He's not just a person of history. He's not just somebody's imagination or a book that was written about somebody who's trying to become popular. No, sir, Jesus Christ is real. He walks with me, the song says, and talks with me and tells me that I am his own. Thank God I know that he's real. Don't you know that? Amen. Haven't you talked to him today? Hasn't he touched your life today? Hasn't he touched your spirit today? Oh yes, he's real and only Jesus can do for us what needs to be done. It's too late to tell me he's not real. And it's too late to tell me he can't heal. I believe in the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe what the Bible teaches us in the book of James that if any be sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil. Pray over them. And the Bible says if they have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven them. Listen, the oil doesn't save. The laying on of hands doesn't save. But faith in the Lord Jesus Christ can heal a person of whatever that's wrong with them. I've seen God raise too many people out of the hospital bed. I've seen God touch the bodies of those that others have given up hope on. Make them well. Yes, God is a God, a healing God. I believe it with all of my heart. You say, well, preacher, how come he doesn't heal everybody? It's not his will to heal everybody. He wants somebody in heaven with him, and sometimes he calls them. Amen. Well, God can heal. He's healed me. And listen, I got to thinking about that when studying this message. I believe God's healed some folks of things they don't even know they had on the inside. God heals us. I sure wish he'd heal this foot of mine. <laughs> Do it real quick. I was kidding back there a few minutes ago. All day long, it's in my right foot, the gout. But all day long, my left foot's hurt. And I told somebody, I reckon the doctor just gave me medicine for the right foot and not the left foot. I don't know where that works or not. But I hope it, but the Lord is a healing Lord. You read about it in the Bible where he healed the blind and he healed the lepers and his power hasn't diminished from, this, from that day to this day. He's still a Lord that can heal. You can't tell me and it's too late for you to try to tell me God can't heal. And it's too late to tell me that he can't save old sinners. Because you're looking at one that he saved. Amen. Saved by the grace. That's a sweet word. you know that? The word saved... I'm saved. Say it with me. I'm saved. Say it again. I'm saved. What better thing can you say than that? That I am saved by the grace of God. My sins are forever gone. My citizenship is in heaven. My name is in the book of life. The Holy Ghost of God lives on the inside. God can save sinners and I'm glad that he can. And it's too late to tell me that he can't save people. I've seen him save folks that everybody else has given up on. 
But the Lord never gives up on anybody. We do. But God will love them right to the very end. I've seen them get right with the Lord and I believe they really did get right with the Lord laying on the deathbed. I've seen them just a few days to live get saved. I've seen them get saved as a young person like the young boy did this morning. I've seen them, seen God save folks that was messed up in marriage and put the marriage back together. I'm here to tell you that God can save sinners and it's too late to tell me that anybody is beyond the reach of God. Years ago, believe it or not, I had a flat top. (laughs) That's when I had all of my hair and it wasn't coming out. Now y'all can laugh, you'll get there one of these days. Some of you got way ahead of me, ain't you, Steve? But I had a flat top. I mean, I really did. When they first come out, I said, I told my dad I want a flat top. We didn't get a haircut without asking dad what kind we could get, you know. And uh, dad was paying for it, so we got what he wanted us to have. But I talked him into letting me get a flat top. And... Uh, Back in those days when you got a flat top, you had to get a ball of wax that come in this tube. Y'all remember that? And you put that wax on there, make that hair stand up. Man, I was going to church that Sunday and Charlotte was going to be there. And uh, I get to sit with her and uh, I wasn't even old enough to shave. But I had that stuff on my hair and I had every hair in place and it's standing up just right. And I was looking forward to it and I got out of the car and here come one of them sorry old deacons. Grabbed a hold of my head and started rubbing my hair. (laughs) Made me as mad as fire. I could have kicked him in the shin. I wanted to awful bad. But I knew when I got home I wished I hadn't. So I didn't kick him. But he messed up that flat top that I had, wiped all that wax off of it, and I looked like a mess going in church to sit beside of my wife. Amen. I know those days are gone, but I wasn't a saved person back then. He better be glad I didn't say what I was thinking. Amen. Because I wasn't thinking very good about him at that particular time. And... uh, just mess me up real bad. Well, I said all of that to say this. Not just the hair, but we get messed up on the inside, friend. And the years ago when we were in sin, we were a mess. Our soul was in a mess. Our life was in a mess. But somebody come along that told us about Jesus and the Holy Ghost convicted us and we bowed and accepted him as Savior. I'm glad God still saves sinners. Glad he saved me. Hallelujah. I'm feeling pretty good. Now y'all know the song that I'm talking about. I couldn't tell you the name of it to save my life. But I do remember that it's too late to tell me that God's not real. It's too late to tell me he don't have the power to heal. And it's too late to tell me that he can't save. Praise the Lord. Let's stand, please, across the building.